Good morning, St. John's. I hope everyone's doing well. Uh, today, I want to talk about our regathering plan. So this is when we open on July 25 for in-person worship, what that's going to look like. Uh, but first, I want to say that uh, COVID has taught us a few things. Uh, one of the things is that there are many people uh, who um, have not been able to join us for worship in person uh, in the past, who once we were able to do a virtual service, have um, be begun to join us and uh, have made this their uh, community, not only in name, but also very much actively participating in our worship services. So the 10 o'clock virtual service that we've been doing has been really expansive for us. Uh, the other thing that we've learned is the beauty of having one community. So um, in the past, we've had divergent um, groups so in eight o'clock and they had nine, 11, 15 and five. But one of the beautiful things about uh, COVID is that we have come together. So one of the things that we are trying to do as we regather is to regather mindfully and to be aware of some of these really beautiful pieces um, of uh, the COVID um, structure of how we've been gathering together. Really mindful of that and trying to preserve as much of that as we can, while at the same time recognizing that um, uh, we we can't just have everybody in the sanctuary all at one time. So what we're going to do as we regather is um, we have a kind of a temporary plan uh, where we're not looking beyond that. And this is the kind of the immediate reopening plan. And then we're going to reassess it as time goes on. But the first thing that we do know is that starting on July 25, we're going to be regathering with a three service structure. <clears throat> and the way this is going to happen is that we're going to keep the 10 o'clock service. We've been used to a 10 o'clock virtual service where the, the, our community comes together. So we're going to keep that combined 10 o'clock service, which typically um, in the past was our summer schedule anyway. But we're going to be doing this for a longer term. And I'm going to say a little bit more about that in a moment. So it's going to be a 10 o'clock service. But and before that, there's going to be an 8 o'clock. And then in the evening, there's going to be a 5 o'clock. So we're going to have an 8 10 and 5. Um, a couple of things about this, because of, of the um, the pandemic and the importance now, we're all aware of small spaces and, um, and the need to just have a little bit more breathing room. We're actually going to be doing the 8 o'clock service um, in the, for the immediate future, we're going to be doing it in the main sanctuary and not in our small chapel. And uh, we're going to reassess this as we go along. So, that's going to be the eight o'clock service. Um, and then we're going to have this break at nine o'clock. Uh, and we're really hoping that this will be a community hour. Uh, I'm working hard to make sure that we have donuts um, in addition to the coffee so that we can uh, really have the eight o'clock um, people stick around, enjoy some coffee and some treats. And then um, maybe the people for the 10 o'clock service can come a little bit early. Um, I think about for my own kids, there's nothing like uh, saying, hey, let's go to church and get some donuts um, to kind of motivate you to get there a little bit early. And what we're hoping is for some intersection between uh, these two communities, the eight and the 10. Then at 10 o'clock, we're going to have our uh, our main service. And this one is actually going to be live streamed. Now, um, we're Right now, currently in the process of contracting uh, and, and getting some bids to contract with a tech company that can come in. And my hope, and this is what I'm working for, is to make sure that that live stream is as intimate as possible. So we're not talking about one camera in the back so that you feel like you're a fly on the wall. We're talking about um, a real intimate experience to where there are multiple cameras in the sanctuary. Now, this won't affect um, the if you're in if you're sitting in church, you're not going to know know this or even notice it. Um, but uh, but if you are sitting at home, you're going to have a, a, an experience of the service that uh, when I think about it, like the image I have is uh, when you go to a, a, a sports event and you sit in the stadium. That, there's something really energetic about that, being there, really exciting to be there in person. Uh, if you're at home, you actually also have the benefit of certain views and, uh, and, and close-ups that you might not have if you were sitting in the sanctuary. 
But what this will do, it's a, it'll it'll create a there'll be a benefit to both if you're at home or if you're there in person, and it won't feel like if you're at home you're sitting in the worst seats in the stands in the very back. So it'll be it'll be up up front and it'll and it'll be intimate. And the idea behind this is, <clears throat> I'm trying really hard at St. John's to not create two communities, one virtual and one in person. But we really want to maintain, because it's been so sacred for us, to keep one community. And so those who are not able to join us in person, whether they live outside of the state um, or in another part of the world, or um, it's a, you know, you're someone who is uh, homebound uh, for um, a number of reasons, um, that you can feel really close and connected to the community. And there's a few other pieces in there of how my my connection as the rector with the virtual community will happen on Sunday mornings. But we're, you know, we're still working out those things. Now, one thing to bear in mind, um, at this point, because a lot of the cameras and the technology pieces are on back order, you can imagine churches are doing this um, a lot right now as they're regathering, is that uh, we... We're not sure if by July 25, we're going to actually be up and running with the live stream piece. This means that for an interim period, uh, I'm going to continue to do a Zoom virtual service. I'm not sure yet what time of day that's going to be because we're going to be starting on July 25 with a 10 o'clock service, which was our typical time that we were doing a virtual service. But there's going to be another time in there. Um, where there will be a Zoom service. And what we're aiming for is definitely by Renewal Sunday, which is in early September, that we'll be able to merge the two um, so that there will be a, the 10 o'clock will be both in person and live streamed in a way that feels connective to anybody who attends the service, whether virtually or in person. And then um, after that, there's going to be the 11 o'clock coffee hour, connection, adult forum, um, and that is, um, uh, you know, will create more and, and church school and that'll, you know, kind of be our education hour and fellowship time. Um, and then we'll have a five o'clock service and that will uh, be very similar to the way that um, the five o'clock uh, folks who've been attending in the past uh, know it. It's a, a very informal service. We, we call it come as you are. It doesn't mean that the rest of the service are come as you or not, um, but this one is, um, it's casual. The music's a little bit different too. It's its on the piano and then we gather in the round to take communion together. Now, one last thing about this regarding communion is that uh, for the foreseeable future, we are, for obvious reasons, not going to be um, partaking of one cup. So we're going to be doing communion only with the bread. So you'll come up, you'll receive the bread, but none of us are going to actually be taking the wine. Um, and again, this is not permanent. This is just for the foreseeable future and just to make sure that um, we are being mindful and safe and not um, uh, communicating anything that we don't want to communicate uh, when we take communion. So um, we'll be celebrating the Eucharist as as normal. We'll be consecrating a little bit of wine and yet the wine will remain on the table and uh, we'll all partake of the bread, but not the wine. So um, one thing that I can, that I know for sure is that we're going to reevaluate and we're going to adjust as we move along. The One of the commitments of the vestry, and, and definitely for me, is that we want to regather mindfully. And we're under no illusions uh, uh, that this is going to be a one-time thing. Of course not. It's, it's not, we're adjusting as we go along figure out what works, what doesn't work, and then um, we will, um, you know, discern uh, what it'll look like as we move forward. But I'm really, really excited about uh, this um, opportunity to kind of get back together and see how this new era in our church is going to look now that we have come through the pandemic. And um, I uh, also want to say that a there's a and there's a plug here is that what we are going to definitely need to do is create a new ministry and that's our audiovisual ministry. And so if you're someone who is tech savvy, if you can imagine yourself getting really excited about being on a team that 
runs the live stream on Sunday mornings. And um, it's a really involved thing. We're going to need a team of three people every Sunday. Uh, so if that's something that you want to be trained to do and you're detail oriented and you just kind of get the uh, uh, digital stuff, uh, then please uh, contact me. Let me know because um, we that's going to be the next thing that we're going to have to uh, pursue and recruit for. And it's a really, really important function. Uh, it's very sacred. It's, it's, it's basically facilitating our online campus. And we're going to make sure that that's done super well. Uh, so please let us know if you're interested. Uh, and then the last thing that I want to say uh, on this subject is that as we begin to regather um, and we're kind of coming back in person, our church is going to also be exploring what does it look like to be in ministry again. So maybe you've spent a lot of your time at home and you haven't really had to think, well, how can I be involved in church? And I can tell you that uh, every single one of our church ministries is looking for um, uh uh, to, to, to see who wants to um, be a part of them and who wants to give of their time and their talent to make these ministries thrive. So I want to ask you to start considering um, ways in which you might want to get involved in order to, um, you know, lend uh, your time and your talent to making the church function and beautiful and thrive. And so um, there might be something in particular you're interested in uh, that you're like, you're like, I don't even know, is there a ministry that does this kind of stuff? But definitely want to invite you to reach out to Ann Dursey. She is our um, Minister for Community Engagement. And she, uh, w one of her big roles is making sure to um, match individual parishioners with the ministries that really will bring the most life uh, to them and to the ministry. So please contact Ann, let her know you're interested. Uh, and also keep an ear out for us reaching out to you and saying, hey, would you uh, consider being a part of this or that uh, ministry? So really exciting stuff, St. John's. I realized looking at the time, I've already recorded a 12 minute video. Um, and so I'll end here. And I just want to say thank you, everyone. And I'm really looking forward to what God has in store for us. God bless. I'll see you this Sunday as we gather for our 10 a.m. virtual service. See you soon.